going today? It is so good to see you. I do hope you are super well. And yes, I am wearing a giant yellow puffer, not because it's cold, but to celebrate the fact that Tamron has released yet another native Z mount lens. This is a lens that I think will be super popular. Here we are at the Australian Grand Prix in Melbourne on the Tamron 28 to 75 native Z mount. And this is Gen 2. And guess what? You can vlog on it. I'm doing it right now. I'm on a Z8. You can do it on a ZF, a Z62, eh, whatever you want. Awesome. Seventy-five mil on the Tamron, so stable. And then we go out to twenty-eight mil, and that's a great shot. Now here we've got a train about to come past, which is going to look very cool. Yeah, there you go. This is a great angle. One twenty-fifth f two point eight. Just some beautiful imagery here, ISO 800. Let's maybe go to, uh, let's go to 16. Really nice. Just loving that 28 mil. Yes, indeed, here it is. This is the camera that I shot most of this video on when we see samples in the wild. This is the 28 to 75 on the ZF. And firstly, I just want to talk about What's the build quality like and what can we expect in regards to buttons, rings and switches? Well, there's no switches, as we can see on the side here. We do have this one button here, programmable button. We have a zoom ring and we have a focus ring. And down here, we have the USB-C port for updating firmware. Now, build quality wise, we have a metal mount, of course, and Really hard to tell whether that is some sort of alloy or whether it's a composite. I'm going to go with that being an alloy. The lens feels well built, great in the hand. The resistance on both of the rings is good as you would want it to be. As we can see, this lens does telescope, which is standard for this sort of lens. We've seen it with Nikon's 24-70 to 2.8, which does it just a little bit, the 24-70 to F4, which does it a little bit more, and many other lenses, and obviously every other brand has telescoping lenses. That's fine. It's just something that you need to be aware of, but this is a very minor amount of telescoping. This is a great lens which can be used by everybody. The thing here is I haven't done a side-by-side -side comparison. I will do that in the next video if I can hold on to it for a little bit longer. Tamron, can I hold on to it for a little bit longer? Let me know, that'd be cool. The Tamron 28 to 75 f2.8 DI3 VXD G2. And we are shooting full frame on the ZF version 1.1. And we are starting off with a shutter speed of one second handheld. Now this really is pushing the friendship and we can see that there is a slight amount of camera shake. 100% here on this massive 4K screen. Well, I think one second is probably quite difficult, but I almost made it. Let's see if I got it a little bit later on. Here's the next frame, and we are again at one second, and this is looking almost like I got away with it. Very close to getting away with one second. Now, I am at base ISO. We're on the ZF. We could easily be at 800 ISO, and thus we could be at one eighth of a second and have the same exposure. We're at one third of a second here, 100 ISO, we can get away with a third of a second handheld with the ZF, as long as you're employing correct photographic technique. I loved the green and the red here. I just thought that looked super cool. Now, how are we going for purple fringing? We can see the tiniest amount of it when we're at 200%. At 100%, it's pretty hard to see. Is it a deal breaker? I don't think so. One third of a second, 100 ISO f2.8. Cracker image, 100 ISO, one fifth of a second f2.8. Shadows brought up to max. It's just not a problem with this sensor. You can push it 
really hard and we can see one fifth of a second handheld. It seems to be sharp and camera shake is eliminated. We are at 2.8, so the buildings and cranes in the background are falling slightly out of focus, but I do think that the banister here and the lights look pretty sharp. Love this image. Makes me think Batman's going to appear any second. Now, we are now at 1 over 1.6 of a second. Very slow handheld. I still think we're getting away with it. Here we're having a look at what the Bokeh looks like, and I really like it. It actually looks really nice. Nice round balls, and we are at 2.8, one third of a second, and I don't mind the textures in there. I think I think this is a really, really nice result. One third of a second handheld F2.8, 100 ISO at 28 mil. I love this shot. There's something about the sign on the ground, and the tree, and the play equipment, and the out-of-focus buildings in the background. It's just my sort of image. Perhaps not for everybody. 1 20th of a second, and the ISO is now at 1250. And just to give you an idea of how good the ZF is, I have done no extra processing other than what Capture One does straight out of the box. And Quite frankly, there is not much sign of grain here. So you don't have to shoot at 100 ISO. You can go to 1,250 and higher and there really is no penalty. It's quite amazing. 1 20th of a second, 74 mil, f2.8, handheld. Loved this particular location. I've actually never shot in this exact spot before and we're able to get quite close to the trains and I'm just loving the light. I'm loving the light there on the left, the blues and the reds. This is all just in camera. You can see here that I've done nothing to the saturation. This is just straight out of camera. We could bring up the shadows a little bit, but that is a beautiful result. We are at full ZF sensor 57 mils handheld one tenth of a second f 2.8 and the whole series of these just beautiful from my perspective again having a look at the out of focus areas and i just think this is a really beautiful soft rendition and the bokeh balls they just look absolutely great everything about this absolutely rocks for me we can bring up the shadows a bit more increase the contrast a little and really, that's a perfect outcome from my perspective. We are at 28 mil, 800 ISO, one quarter of a second. Very dark in this particular location. 75 mil, shooting 10 bit 4K on the ZF. 2.8 ISO at 100 out to, there is your 28 at 2.8. Down on the river, again, we're handheld, one sixth of a second, 800 ISO at 100%. That does all look sharp to me. Again, I can see very slight signs of purple fringing here over on the concert hall and up here on the Rialto. But again, this is 100%. It's very minor. You can see what I've just shot there. Working brilliantly. Brilliantly. Behold. Love the colour, looks nice and sharp, great colour rendition, accurate, very accurate, looks really good, we're handheld at one eighth of a second, we're back to ISO 100, just take a little bit of a look at that fringing there, something to keep in mind. Now we've moved from purple to green and that would be, I think, the change in focal length, the previous image we were at 28 mil and here we're at 75 mil. At 100%, the degree of sharpness is good. We're one fifth of a second handheld ISO 100. At the Australian Grand Prix, this is the Senna helicopter a special helicopter made for the great driver himself in honor of him this was flying directly above me we're at 28 mil here and that's how close it was pretty damn close
I didn't have a lot of time with this lens, but here is the beautiful Porsche Taycan 4S Cross Turismo. You know, if, <laughs> I mean, who wouldn't love this electric car? I certainly would. But just some daytime images so you can see how it's handling things. At 100%, the Porsche logo is looking very sharp. We are at 64 ISO on the Z8, 1 320th of a second at 5.6. Here I just wanted to show flaring and how it is. We can see down in the bottom right hand corner here, but I think it's handling and suppressing that all pretty well. We're at 28 at F22 at 1 60th of a second. So this is the sun stars you can expect also. Now this is the other end of the spectrum, same shot, but we're at F2.8 at 16 thousandth of a second. And yeah, I think that is really smooth looking into the sun. That is quite a result. With the extra detail of the Z8, it's actually rendering this detail here of the wire. And that's why I shot it. So you could look at these textures. It looks very, very sharp. So this is a sharp looking lens. A 28 to 75 is not really the right lens to be capturing cars. I wasn't there to capture cars. I was just in general admission walking around, just capturing the general ambiance. It's actually the first time I've ever been to the Australian Grand Prix. There's a lot to take in. And on my exit from the Grand Prix, this is a building that's in St Kilda at the Punt Road Junction. And again, we're just looking at resolution and it's rendering the facade on that building really well. And I actually think this lens is quite sharp. Some gentlemen here watching the end of the race. At the Australian Grand Prix, in the very few occasions where general admission tickets can actually glance the track and the cars were literally going past this opening in something like one second. In the case of being a general admission ticket holder, it's probably best to just sit in the shade and watch the race on the big screens of which we can see the back of one here. There are many around. Otherwise, a ticket in the stands, that is absolutely the go. Just pause the video if you'd like to read the full tech spec now. And of course, it is for Z mount and E mount. Standard, it comes with the lens hood and the lens cap. It has the B bar G2 coating, which helps with flare, along with a moisture resistant construction, which protects the lens. For greater protection when shooting outdoors, there are leak resistant seals throughout the lens barrel to help protect the lens. And the USB-C port that we talked about earlier, that is also waterproofed. A fluorine coating on the front of the lens helps repel water and oil. This is a high quality lens. As you can see in the images, you might want 24 mils instead of 28 mils. For some people, that's an important four millimeters. So that's just something to keep in mind. Otherwise, it's 28 to 75, f2.8, and with all of the full frame Z bodies, you are getting stabilization with this lens. So it's useful for all the things that this sort of focal range is good for. Now at this weight, nearing 500 grams and this price point, it's a really good option to have in your bag. Obviously we have in the Nikon range, the 24-70 f2.8, the 24-70 f4, and also the 28-75 2.8. They're all the native Z Nikon ones, let alone all the other lenses that cover this range. We have the 24-120 to f4, the 24 to 200 f4 to 6.3, I think it is, and the brand new 28 to 400 f4 to f8. So if you're just interested in this zoom range and f-stops are not as important to you, yes, there are a lot of options. But this is fast, 2.8, and it's small and light. It's a great option. Let me know in the comments below, is this a lens that you're interested in? It's version two, it's out now. It's been so good to see you, and if this is your first time here, I would love to see you again, so please do subscribe, please share, and please like. Bye for now.
why is 28 not as wide as 24? And it wasn't, because if you go APS-C, 28 becomes, what is that, uh, 14? It becomes 42. It's quite different. It's quite different. All right, let's take a shot at, actually, yeah, see, that's what, that's, that's gorgeous. I'm really liking the 28 to 75 Tamron. It's sharp, it's fast, it's light. It's good, it's a good, and it's native Z. Can't go wrong. And of course it's native Z, and maybe one day in a few years you'll be able to stick it on your native red. Z on red. <laughs>